Oh my, Krata. <laughs> I see. Sorry. Oh, video plus. Ah. Come on, what's it? Turn on your camera. Come on, what's it? Do not turn your camera. Okay.
right. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good morning. If you are here, please say hello in the chat. Hello. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Please do not have your camera or your microphone on. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I hope you guys had breakfast because it is a cooking class. So if you did not eat breakfast, you're going to be hungry. <laughs> All right. And if you have your coffee, like I have my coffee, cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to a wonderful Saturday, a wonderful rainy Saturday. I don't know about you guys, but I love rainy days. I like to put my blanket on and I like to read a book or right now read my webtoons. <laughs> and it's, uh, I love this weather, but I'm from California. California, we don't get a lot of rain. So when it's a rainy day, I'm very happy. Alrighty, good. All right, well, good morning. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we are making spaghetti sauce or specifically Italian marinara sauce. So marinara, um, marinara, I think you say in Korean, but yeah, today we're making marinara. All right, it's pretty simple. Um, now I am going to teach you a pretty simple way to make marinara. Um, however, this is not going to be the authentic Italian marinara sauce because one, marinara sauce, real authentic Italian marinara, it cooks for about six hours. You cook tomatoes for about six hours. We don't have time. And two, it starts with anchovies. I don't like anchovies, so I took that out. Um, if you, uh, no camera, please. No camera, no microphone. Thank you. Um, so if you really want to look up the authentic marinara sauce, um, the recipe should have uh, anchovies and it should be like four to eight hours long. It's a very, very, very long process. We're doing a short one. Um, as you know, a lot of you love spaghetti. How many of you love spaghetti with tomato sauce? Who loves pasta with tomato sauce? Because I love pasta with tomato sauce, but when you get the, the jar of tomato sauce, it's okay, but it is not as good it is definitely not as good as making your own. So I'm going to teach you a very simple marinara recipe so that you can make it at home and it'll be healthier for you and your family and it will taste better, I promise. All right, let's get started with the PPT. Um, if at any point any of you have questions, if at any point any of you have questions, please, 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 please don't be afraid to ask me. Um, but first, can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Can you all, I know you can see me. All right, you can hear me. Am I a good sound? Am I at a good level or should I make it louder? Should I make it quieter? Okay, good, awesome. You think it's good now? All right, perfect. All right, all right. So Italian marinara sauce with Professor Tara Rolodge. That's me. You can call me Professor T. You do not have to say Professor Tara or Professor Rolodge. That's very difficult. So just Professor T. All righty, so uses for marinara. For marinara sauce, of course, pasta, of course. Um. For pizza sauce, oh, this sauce on a pizza, ooh, ooh, it's gonna be good. Um, 
if you know there is a an egg dish called eggs in purgatory or another word is eggs in hell but it's a tomato uh it's a hot marinara sauce where they cook eggs a whole egg like three like two or three eggs inside the tomato sauce they don't mix you just pour the egg in and it is delicious it is so good um, to eat with some bread or some crackers mm, so good and one thing we love to do in america is use marinara as a dipping sauce um especially cheese sticks if you get a cheese stick or buy cheese sticks dip it in this marinara sauce oh my gosh and i mean like the fried the fried cheese stick not not the not the just cheese you buy no it has to be dipped or it has to have the breading on it and it has to be fried and you dip it in the marinara sauce oh oh it's so good all righty your tools for today first we have up here our tools of course you need a cutting board you need knives boiling water um bowls pots a pot uh garlic press measuring cups spoons measuring cups and spoons, and ice water uh, for our vegetables today. Now, you can do a can. You can do a can of peeled tomatoes, or I'm going to use four, four large tomatoes. I'm going to show you the more authentic way to make marinara sauce, starting from absolute scratch. If you want an easy life, get a can. Just get a can of peeled tomatoes. If you want it to be a bit healthier and not risk the metal taste, then just four large tomatoes. We have one onion, two garlic cloves, or garlic. You feel that with your heart. <laughs> it says two, but really, it is with your heart. And for their spices today, we have salt, pepper, sugar, or cinnamon. And then we have dried basil, parsley, rosemary, oregano, red pepper flakes. Or if you just found an Italian seasoning blend, totally fine. And we need some olive oil today. All right, our directions. If you want, you can go ahead and screenshot these directions. Um, first, we're going to clean the tomatoes and make an X cut. So on the very bottom of the tomato, we're going to cut it like an X. And then we're going to pour boiling water. We're going to pour boiling water over it. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it very easy to peel the tomato. And then we put it in an ice bath. Next, we're oh, and then we're going to cut up all the vegetables. Um, in a medium heavy bottom saucepan, combine everything. The garlic. Oh, yeah, garlic. Um, olive oil, oregano, red pepper flakes, all that. And then in this recipe, it says to cook for 45 minutes. I don't think we're gonna have 45 minutes. So we're gonna do about 15, 20, but you're going to cook until you can see some oil come out of the tomato. Um, and then we're going to remove the pot from the heat. In that, we're going to smash everything smash it, um, mush it, make it into a paste, or if you want, you can blend it. Blending is fine. And then we're gonna add our salt to taste. So how, how salty you like it. It's already gonna be a bit salty with the tomato, but if you wanna add more salt, completely fine. Now, something about tomatoes is it is very acidic, like lemon. It doesn't taste like lemon, but it is acidic like lemon. This is why you should never, ever, never, ever use an aluminum, an aluminum pot and cook a tomato dish. Never, ever. The acidity from the tomato will destroy your aluminum. All right. Never, ever. Um, and then, but yeah, for the acidic taste, we use cinnamon or sugar. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I prefer cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon and you want to do sugar, totally fine. No camera and no microphone, please.
Thank you. Okay. And then this does keep very well. If you want to keep it in your refrigerator, you can keep it up to four days or you can freeze it for six months. and It'll still be good. It'd be a very good idea to pour the tomato sauce into an ice tray and then put it in your freezer. And then once it's all frozen, put your tomato or your marinara sauce cubes into a bag and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. Hello again, hi, hi, hi. Um, for anybody who has just entered, please say hello in the chat. Please say hello in the chat and we're going to go ahead and get started. Oops, that was loud. Okay, so I have my four tomatoes here. Um, again, if at any point you have any questions, please, please ask me. I'd be so happy to answer. All right. Uh, first, we're going to get rid of the green. We're going to get rid, rid of the green stem, which I don't know if you know. The green stem, the green stem on the tomato will make you very sick. Don't eat it. Don't eat the plant of the tomato. Just eat the fruit. Back in the Renaissance times, back a long, long time ago, they didn't know how to cook very well. They boiled everything. Um, and so they would boil the tomato and the whole plant together. Many people got sick from eating the soup from the whole tomato plant. And for a long time, they called tomatoes the poison apple. Guys, don't, don't eat the green on a tomato plant. All right, so. I have my tomato here for the first part. We're gonna to wanna to peel, but how do we do that? Well, you're going to get your tomato and you're just going to make an X, just a slight X. So then I have a bowl right here. And put them inside the bowl. Again, we're making a small X. I already started on this one a little bit. You're not going deep. Like this is this is how deep I'm going. You're not going deep at all. Just enough to cut the skin. All right. Put this off to the side for a second. All right. So here I have my tomatoes with the X cut. And I have an ice bath. An ice bath is water with ice. All right, so next I need some boiling water. Now, just to make it easy, I did a kettle of hot water. Make it easy for this cooking class. You can absolutely get a pot of hot boiling water and put the tomatoes on the inside, but I'm gonna do it this way for this cooking class. I'm just gonna pour it, make sure it gets into the X and all over. And we're gonna let this sit in the hot water for about 15 to 30 seconds. And I am making sure it gets plenty hot. If you are using a pot of water, you know it's hot enough when the skin starts to curl back just a little bit. Um, I am not using a pot of water, so I'm gonna use my tongs here and I'm gonna turn them over so that the hot water can permeate or go into the tomatoes or go into the tomato skin. Cause we're just, look, we're boiling the tomatoes. We're not, or tomato skin, we're not boiling the tomatoes. Alrighty, real quick. I know that we have some questions today. So I want to ask you guys. Now, you should have seen these questions beforehand to have your own answer. So, number one, have you ever made marinara or just pasta sauce? Any pasta sauce. Have you ever made marinara from scratch before? Anybody in anybody here? Anybody here ever make pasta sauce, whether it's cream sauce, tomato sauce, rosé. Have you ever made your own? Just bought one? It's easy. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, this is quite... All right, so what I'm doing is actually never ever, oh, well, you're in for a treat today. Okay, what this is actually called, this is called blanching. Blanch, when you blanch the tomato, you're putting in that hot water and then into an ice bath. And what happens is the ice will shock the very hot skin. It's going to shock the very hot skin and that's what's gonna make it peel. Also, it keeps, it keeps the tomato from cooking. So this one was in, let's see how easy. Usually I use a pot of hot water, but it's, it's slightly peeling. It should be, it should like fall. It should be like, shoo, shoo. but I'm using, I'm just using kettle hot water. I'm not using a pot. So just to make it simple. This is okay. When I cut it up, I'll take the skin off, but that's all right. Um, I'll do this for a couple more seconds. But yeah, you guys have never made your own sauce before? I have been making my own tomato sauce since I was a kid, but I used canned, I used canned goods. I did not use, um, like I used canned tomatoes, canned tomato paste canned peeled tomatoes, canned just everything because it was easy for me as a kid. So, um, all right, well, this didn't, doing the hot kettle did not work <laughs> as well as I want. Of course not. Um, so word to the wise, word to the wise, use a pot of hot water. Don't do it kettle wise. Okay. <laughs> all right. But this is honestly, it's okay. All this means is that when I cut the tomatoes, it's going to be a bit more cumbersome. It's going to be more, a bit more tricky. And you know what? Such is life. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> All righty. So let's get this hot water out of here. All right. So you guys have never made tomato sauce. That's okay. I hope today... After seeing what goes on, you will. All right, let's try these ones. This sat in the hot water a little bit longer. <gasps> ooh, 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 maybe, maybe, no, that's okay. I'll just cut off the peel. We'll lose some tomato, um, but it's not the end of the world. If you don't want to lose, ooh, oh, oh man, so close. If you don't want to lose a lot of tomato, um, the do blanching is the, oh, come on. Blanching is the best, oh, 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 is it working? Nope, all right, that's okay. <laughs> Blanching is the best way if you don't wanna lose a lot of tomato. I'm gonna lose a lot of tomato, but that's okay. I just, it's just me and my husband in my house. So we'll survive. All right, um, after that, after you are done blanching and peeling, then you can uh, start cutting everything into small cubes. So let's see if I can peel this. Uh, let's go on to our next question. Um, what other types of sauce do you enjoy cooking or eating pasta dish dishes with? So what are your favorites? Could I make a sauce championship? Yes, if you hate yourself. Because <laughs> remember, you have to peel every little thing. Also, cherry tomatoes are going to have a very different taste, very different. Um, but you know what, experiment, why not? You do what you feel, all right? You do what you feel and you do you, you do you. But yeah, tomato, cherry tomatoes will make your life very difficult. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah. So guys, what uh, what's what are your favorite pasta sauces? What are your favorite? Me, I love a good Alfredo. The cream sauce, Alfredo sauce. Oh, I love Alfredo sauce. It is my favorite. It's also incredibly easy to make. Significantly easier <laughs> than tomato sauce. Cream sauce is literally cream Salt, pepper, and Parmesan. Tomato sauce, nice. Any of you just an olive oil, olive oil or butter, butter and noodle kind of person? If any of you have children, 
and you find that they don't like tomato sauce or cream sauce, try butter, just butter and pasta. In America, it is a very big stereotype that children just love buttered noodles. That's it. You've never had the butter sauce? I would say it's a butter sauce, but it's butter, like salt and pepper, and noodle. That's it. That's it. Um, so, oh, real quick, let me talk about the reason why we get rid of the skin. When we get rid of with the skin, it changes the texture. It changes the texture of the tomato sauce. So I'm someone who really doesn't mind it, but a lot of people do. So, and that's okay. That is their choice. That is their life. And also I'm lazy, so I'm not going to peel all of these. <laughs> so again, you feel, you do you. Everything I tell you about this recipe, it's not so much of a science. Baking is a science. You like meat sauce? Me too. Oh, I love meat sauce. Um, this marinara sauce, if you cook meat first and then mix this marinara sauce and, with the meat, oh man. Oh man. So good. But yeah, the reason why we peel the tomatoes is for the texture. Um, me, I don't mind the texture. A lot of people do. A lot of people hate it. I don't care. So again, with cooking like this, it's not a science so much, except don't cook tomato sauce in an aluminum pan. Don't do it. You will destroy your pan. Um, but uh, I just have a bowl over here that I'm putting everything in. Now what I'm doing is called cubing. I am cubing the tomatoes. Remember, these are gonna cook. So all of this water in the tomato is gonna come out and then I'm gonna mash it, I'm gonna smash it, all right? Or you can blend it. So the size doesn't really matter, but you want them small enough so that all the water will come out so you get a delicious sauce. So, that's it, okay. We are running out of time a little bit. I gotta get this cooking. Yeah, you love meat sauce. Um, this sauce, oh my gosh, if you wanna mix it with uh, meat, and then make lasagna. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. Maybe that's good. That maybe that'll be my next cooking class next semester. Make lasagna. Make an easy lasagna. Or a, a lasagna you can make in one hour. Except I, I have to do, you know, uh, you know, cooking shows on TV. They have their the kind of like their TV show magic where they're teaching you how to cook something and then they already have it in the oven or on the stove already finished, already made. It's to save time. For lasagna, something like that, I have to do TV magic. So I'll have to make two. I'll have to make two lasagnas. But lasagna is incredibly easy. It's just many steps. Have any of you ever made lasagna? Also, um, I said before, I am from California. I talk very fast. Um, so if I am too fast, please, please, please ask me to slow down. I will not get angry. I do not mind. I completely understand. As somebody who is learning Korean, I know how frustrating it is when someone speaks too fast and you have to stop them and go, hold on a minute. <laughs> please slow down. Please, please. So if I'm too fast, please tell me. Alrighty, uh, we got one more. Again, I'm not making these into perfect cubes, just small enough so that all the juices can come out. Um, now I did say you can absolutely buy canned tomatoes. This is kind of what you want right here. Peeled, where it says peeled tomatoes. All right, this brand is a really good brand. Muti is a famous pasta. Muti is a famous pasta restaurant. Um, or another good brand is cereal. Um, again, you can buy peeled tomatoes already. You can save time. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But I like fresh. And sometimes some cans of tomatoes 
have a kind of a metal taste that can taste. Um, usually if you put enough salt and pepper, uh, it'll take that taste away. Um, but I like to avoid it. So I'll make, I'll make it from fresh or I will look for sauce and things like that in a glass, in a glass jar. I'll avoid the metal and look for glass. But yeah, uh, let's look at the next question. What do you think are the benefits of making your own sauce instead of using store-bought? So I said some reasons, but what do you guys think? What is the benefit of making your own sauce versus buying or versus just buying a can or a jar of tomato sauce? What are some benefits? All right, tomatoes are done. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up one onion. I just went to Emart and got the pre-peeled. Again, saving time. Exactly, you don't, you don't, yeah, you won't have to put in the ingredients you don't like. That's a good one. There are always, always replicates. If you don't like these big white onions, try a shallot right here. These little teeny tiny purple onions, very tasty. Very, very tasty. And they're not, they don't have that super strong onion taste. I love onions. Love, love, love onions. All right, here I am just cubing. This is what I'm doing is called a rough chop. I'm not making sure everything is the same size. I don't really care about if they look pretty and just like squares because again, I'm a mash. I'm going to mash everything. I should not wave my knife around, excuse me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna mash everything. Or if you have a blender, I'm gonna blend everything. So it doesn't matter. Now, one of the recipes, so even though I have my own recipe, or how I've made spaghetti my whole life. Even though I have that recipe or those, what I have in my mind, um, I still look up recipes just to have it more concrete because if I just say to you, hey, a pinch of this, ah, just throw in this, yeah, it might be good. To have more concrete and more organized um, ingredients and directions for you, uh, I look up a recipe and one of the recipes said to take out the onion. Take out the onion. Why? <laughs> onion is delicious. I love onion. Um, all right. So, but you know, again, you do what you do. All right, guys, keep it coming. What are some more benefits? While you guys are typing, here is what we call a garlic press. You get the garlic and you press. So I'm gonna get my thing here. I am using four cloves of garlic. Again, my recipe calls for two. I don't, that's not enough. I like garlic too much. All right, I like a lot of garlic. So if you only wanna use two, go ahead. If you want to use four, three, four, five, if you really, really, really love garlic and want to use more, go ahead. It, like I said, you feel you feel that ingredient with your heart. You feel that amount with your heart. Yeah, guys, tell me some more benefits. What are some benefits to making your own sauce? Even if I said it before, you can say it again. Which one, what did I say that you agree with? Also, I got this more healthy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, it can be, depending on what you put in. Um, this garlic press I got from Ikea. It is, it makes it so easy, so simple. I love it. Also, the cans of tomatoes I showed you, I just got those at Emart. 
or uh, Home Plus or Latte Mart. They're everywhere. I do suggest Home Plus or Lotte Mart. They will have the most options, I think, of like foreign food that I've I've been in Korea eight years, almost nine. And Home Plus probably has the most amount of foreign food. Then it's Lotte and then it's E Mart. So all good things. All good. Okay. Dun done. Alrighty. So now it is cooking time. Now I do have to warn you guys. Um I have a I have a thing right here. I have this thing right here. It's a bit loud. So I will do my best to try to keep it away from my microphone um, so that it's not so loud. Now, one thing that it was saying, it was saying a heavy bottom pan. I have a La Crusette. Please don't think I'm rich or anything. Somebody was throwing this away and I said, please give it to me. So they got, they got a burnt bottom and they're like, oh, it's not good anymore. Yo. Le Crusette survives everything. Everything. If you have a burnt bottom, boil hot water and soap. Boil hot water and soap, let it cool down, and then clean it. It'll change everything. All right. So I'll put that over there. I'm also putting it to the side over here so that the steam doesn't fog up fog up my uh, my camera. <laughs> so all right. Um, real quick, we're going to get this nice and hot. Oh. Yes, there it is. We're going to get this nice and hot first. I hope this isn't too loud for you. Let me see. Let me see how loud this is. It's not too loud. Okay. Ooh. Is it too loud for you guys? If it's too loud, let me know. Um, we're going to get this nice and hot first. I hope you know when you're using oil to heat a pan, always make sure the pan is hot first because the oil will stick to the pan better. Alrighty, while we're waiting for it to get hot, let's look at the next question. Can you share a special ingredient or technique that you use when cooking that makes your dishes unique? So like, what's your special ingredient? Or what's your special technique? When you are making food, what's like your special ingredient? Um, I was saying for tomato sauce, for me, it's cinnamon. Just a touch, just a touch of cinnamon. Um, when I make guacamole, when I make guacamole, plain yogurt. I'm telling you, plain yogurt. Um, if I make, what is it? Bean chili, you know, like a chili cheese dog, the chili with the bean and the meat. Fun fact, a very good secret ingredient, dark chocolate, just like just like one square. Or if you have a chocolate chip, like four chocolate chips. But that dark chocolate, oh, whew, it brings out all those better flavors. Lots of spring onion. It's good for everything. You are absolutely right. Spring onion. Pepper and curry. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. I don't have a spatula. You guys talk amongst yourselves in the chat. I need to get a spatula. I'm so silly. Excuse me. All right, I'm going to turn down the heat just a little bit. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's that oil is moving very easily. So we know it is nice and hot. I'm going to just coat the edges a little bit. We don't want anything to stick. Um, we call something like this like a pot or a saucepan because you cook sauces in it. Mm. You hear that sizzle? Oh, 
Um, so yeah. Gonna just mix this up a bit. Now, one thing I know you guys are gonna wanna do is to keep touching it because I want to keep stirring and I wanna keep touching it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. I am literally doing this so that everything can be coated in a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick to the side. And then I'm gonna let it sit and put in our spices. So pepper and curry, what are some other special ingredients? Tell me, tell me everything, you guys. All right, first, oregano. In the, in the directions or in the ingredients, I said one spoon, one tablespoon. I'm just gonna do a couple shakes. And by a couple, I mean a lot. I like very flavorful, so. Um, one thing we are going to do is as you are cooking or as this sauce becomes a sauce, as all that water comes out, you, please try it, all right? Please try it as you go and then you can fix. Um, next, I am putting rosemary. And then I got some parsley. Can you see that? Kind of. Got some parsley. I love parsley. Love, love, love it. Um, parsley is definitely one of these herbs you want to grow. Having fresh Italian parsley, and it's pretty easy to grow. Um, having fresh Italian parsley is so much better than dried. Um, but I've also found that the parsley you buy at the store, like the fresh parsley you buy at the store, it's not very flavorful. But the parsley you grow, the Italian parsley, Italian parsley you grow. Mm. Um, next, I got some thyme. Do you have some thyme to watch me pour in some thyme? Just kidding. Again, a couple shakes of that. Fresh thyme is also amazing. Just herbs, fresh herbs. Fresh herbs that you grow are just mm, mm, nothing like them. Um, next, I'm going to put in some crushed red pepper. So let me show you what that looks like. It's like gochugaru before it becomes garu. Looks great. Thank you. Put that in. If you like spicy, put more. If you don't like so spicy, skip it. You can skip whatever you want. And then I'm going to put in some salt because salt will make water come out of vegetables faster. Then, what else? Oh, pepper. I like very peppery sauces, so I'm gonna put a good amount. All right, how's that looking? I'm gonna avoid the steam. There we go, that's what it looks like. Oh, absolutely. Um, Basil is in one of my things. I can't find my basil. So I'm going to cheat. I like very chunky. I like big pieces in my marinara. So after I smash everything, I'm going to go ahead and put this can of diced tomato with basil. All right, because I'm a cheater. <laughs> but basil, please. Um, but yeah, or like I said before, if, ooh, that water's coming out. If you have um, just an Italian herb blend, if you have an Italian herb blend, put it in. Now I do wanna say with fresh basil, put fresh basil at the end. It's kind of like spinach, shigum tea. If you use spinach in a soup, do not put it first. Put it at the end. So it's going to be the same with basil, fresh basil. Um, now, if it's dried, you can put it in at this time. But if it's fresh, put it in at the end. But yeah, that liquid is starting to come out. Now that we have that salt in there and the heat, that water is going to come out. All right, I've mixed it enough. Don't touch it. Guys, don't touch it. Don't touch it. OK. Um, alrighty, so, but yeah, any Italian herbs, rosemary and thyme and oregano are going to be your three basic, and then basil 
and parsley are also going to be good additions. If you don't have them, totally fine. But oregano, rosemary, thyme, those are going to be your three. Alrighty. Um, ooh, which brings me to my next question. How do you typically season your tomato dishes? So, um, that's going to be, that's this one. That's this question right here. How do you typically season your tomato-based dishes? What seasoning, what herbs, what spices, what do you put? So like I said, um, I really like oregano, uh, rosemary, and thyme, and salt and pepper, of course. What about you guys? Let me move this over just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. I'm trying to avoid the steam. What do you guys like to put in your tomato-based dishes? That could be tomato soup. It could be, um, I know in Korea, you put tomatoes in your fruit salad. You put tomatoes in your fruit salad with mayonnaise. Y'all, why? <laughs> um, <laughs> please don't do that. I'm just kidding. You can do what you want. Tomato ketchup. Nice. <laughs> Fun fact, did you know ketchup was actually started in China? Ketchup is not an American dish. It is not an American sauce. It's a Chinese sauce. All right, I'm going to mix it just a little bit. Now, in the directions, it says to mix occasionally means let it sit for a couple minutes and then mix so nothing burns. And then let it sit and then mix for a while and then mix. Again, we are getting all of these juices out. Oh, really? Yeah, it was China. What about the rest of you? Anybody who's here, please tell me, how do you season? What spices do you like in your tomato-based dishes? Also, real quick, my camera is here, but I'm looking at the chat over here. So if you see me talking this way, it's because the chat, the chat box is over here. <laughs> I have two screens. Yeah. Um, uh, what are some of your favorite Italian dishes that use marinara sauce? Let's go on to the next question. What are some of your favorite Italian dishes or Italian foods that use marinara or tomato sauce as an ingredient? You tell me my, you tell me yours and I'll tell you mine. What are your favorite marinara tomato Italian foods? Pizza, yes, good. That's a good one. What else? I'm gonna give it a good smash here to help get that water out. You like marinara espresso? <laughs> I love espresso. I I love my coffee. I love my espresso. I don't know how I'd feel about marinara espresso, but <laughs> Can I tell you something that's very interesting about espresso? Um, so there are very large coffee competitions in, um, there are very large coffee competitions around the world. And one of the things they, one of the things they um, compete over is espresso. How the taste, how to make it, the beans, all of that. Well, fun fact, Italy, oh, Italy loses. Italy never gets first place because in Italy, they like tradition. They keep the tradition of making espresso, which their espresso is very good. It's very good. But they've never changed. Italian baristas and espresso makers, they refuse to try any other method or any other, any different way. So countries like America, or was it Japan wins a lot, um, or other countries around the world, 
they'll tend to be the winner because they do a lot of experimenting, a lot of experimenting. And they'll try different techniques and different beans. But yeah, it's, it's Italy, never. But like, it's espresso. Why would you change espresso? You can. Espresso is very, I use, I only know this because I used to work in a cafe in America where they competed. Um, and one year they actually won best espresso. Actually, let me show you. I'll show you the name. Uh, the company I worked for was called, can you read that? Clutch. Clutch Coffee. It's in California. But in 2007, not this one, not this coffee, but in 2007, Clutch won best espresso in the whole world because they change it up. They like new and exciting things. So I haven't opened this coffee yet. I just got this, but this one is called Vineyard. And, um, if you look at the flavor notes, it is framboise, which is like strawberry, rose hip, and allspice. So it's very, it's very good. You can actually order it. You can order it from abroad. I went to America for my honeymoon um, a couple months ago. So when I was there, all right, it is too hot. Right now it is too hot because it is boiling all the water away. And we don't want that to happen. So again, I'm just going to mash it up a little bit. But yeah, what else? So we got pizza, we got espresso. What are some other awesome Italian dishes that uses marinara sauce? How many of you have had uh, eggplant or chicken parmigiana? Lasagna, yes, oh, good choice. Lasagna is always a good choice. All right, what time is it? Oh, it is almost time. So hold on, I'm gonna get my, my, my potato masher. I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Okay, so it's off. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is a potato masher. I'm gonna go ahead and mash it because everything's soft. Also, I don't have time. <laughs> we are running out of time. Now here is when, oops, sorry, excuse me. Here is when you would add cinnamon or sugar. Now. I'm going to push up my camera pretty high up so you can see. So I am using cinnamon. I prefer cinnamon over sugar. Again, this is to help get rid of the, the acid, the acid taste. And watch my shaker. One, two. That's it. That's all you need. You do not need. If you're going to, you're so hungry now. I told you to have breakfast. I told you. I told you to have a snack. <laughs> now, again, you don't have to do it this way. You can put this in a blender. Put it in a blender to make your life easy. Okay? All right, I'm going to give this a little taste because you should always taste your food. It needs more pepper. Where's my pepper? This is a bit on the sweeter side than I would like. So I'm gonna put some pepper and a bit more salt. But yeah, always try, mix it up. Give it a couple minutes to incorporate. Always give it a couple minutes. Never just put it in and right away. Always give it a little bit of time. All right, let's move on to the next question. Um, do you have any tips for avoiding burning garlic? 
I am really bad at burning garlic, you guys. <laughs> Do any of you have any tips to not turn garlic black when you're cooking? I always end up letting it cook for too long because I'm cooking the onion. An onion takes a little bit longer to cook than garlic, but slightly. All right, I said earlier, because I don't have basil, I'm gonna cheat and use this basil tomato mixture. Oh, by the way, if you do use canned tomatoes, all the juice. Do not throw the juice away. Put in all the juice. All right, now it looks more like marinara. Now oh, it's got that red. Gonna keep smashing. But yeah, guys, this is pretty much it. Um, if you do like, was it? I was turning it. Yeah. If you do like chicken donkasu, chicken donkas, put marinara, put mozzarella cheese, bake it in the oven. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my God, it's so good. It's called chicken Parmigiana. And then out of the oven, you put Parme Parmesan cheese. Oh my gosh, it is the best. Alrighty, before we go, does anybody have any questions? Um, What's your, also the other questions, what's your favorite pasta noodle to put with marinara sauce? A lot of people just like regular spaghetti. I like penne, penne pasta. Um, and then it says, do you have any other favorite recipes or dishes you'd like to share with the class? So you guys, what is your favorite thing to make from, like we can buy everything already made. Like think about pantan. We don't have to make pantan. We can go buy pantan. But what is something that you really love to make over buying? What is something you make from home that you don't want to buy at the store? Or you, what you make is better than buying at the store? Again, I'm just mashing and mashing. Please save yourself some time and do a blender. Please. Please. Save yourself time. I'm probably going to put this in a blender after the class. All right. But that's it, you guys, we're done. At this point, you can eat it with bread. You get a piece of toast, dip it in. Mm. You can start making your pasta now. You can put it on your chicken donkas. You can do whatever you want because now your homemade, fresh, really easy and simple marinara is done. Um, again, you are supposed to cook it a lot longer we don't have time to cook it so much longer, but that's okay. Um, but the rule, the, the recipe said 45 minutes. So if you, we cooked it for about 30, uh, 25, 30 minutes, so it's good enough. But 45 to an hour, or you wanna be really Italian, six. Six hours, very low heat, then that's the Italian way. Alrighty, everyone. If you have a question, go ahead and ask. If you make this, please email me a picture. I would love to see your creations. Um, the last cooking class, somebody sent me a picture of them making the, the pasta and potato salad that I made last cooking class. And it just, oh, it warmed my heart so much. Uh, my email is on the Cuffs website. So please, 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 if you make this, send me a picture. I would love to see it. If you have any questions, please email me. I'm so happy to answer any questions. Alrighty, we're done. It is time for Dr. Not Dr. Professor, Professor Joshua's class. Get out of here and enjoy your Saturday. I hope you have fun with Professor Joshua. Thank you, Tara. everyone. Have Goodbye. A have a great Happy day. Saturday. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you had fun. Thank you.
Have fun in Professor Joshua's class. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty, thank you so much for being here.